What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Wally Outdoors. On today's episode, we're going to be covering how I do some of uh, my venison cooking. Uh, I figured it'd be kind of cool. Tis the season. I got my second deer. I'll show a picture of my second deer right here. And I'm not sure yet if I'm going to put that hunt, that whole hunt, in on a video yet. Um, I did go out with a friend of mine. Um, we did some hunting together. Um, so I'm not sure how that's all going to play out just yet. I haven't pieced that footage all together. Um, the idea that that day was to try to get him on a deer. And uh, it wound up not working out for him in his favor. So I'm going to talk to him and see what's going on with that. And maybe we'll put something together for that. But it is some pretty good footage. Although it was very tough filming because of the weather and the conditions we were in. So stay tuned for that. That one might come out. That hunt might come out. You'll get to see that. Um, you know, Unfortunately, you'll get to see me shoot my deer on video. Um, but that's just because of how the hunt went. It was pretty crazy. So anyhow, I'm going to... Uh, Move on to what we're gonna do today. So today I'm gonna to flip the camera around. I'm gonna show you what we're actually what we're up against here, and what we're gonna put on the grill, and how I'm gonna do it. And a way to actually, you can do your steaks this way. It doesn't just have to be venison, but it's gonna be a way for you guys to keep your meat nice and tender, and also keep that moisture into it. Um, a lot of people don't do this. Or I have seen others do it, but it's not too common. They let it sit as long as I'm gonna show you. It's a really great trick for venison because it's very lean. There's not much fat to it. So it's an awesome way to keep that meat from really drying out on you. Check it out, stay tuned here. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, today guys, for the purpose of this video, I have a couple of deer um, tenderloins, inner loins, ready to go. I already have some steak rub that I used and I'll show you which steak rub that is here in just a second. Here it is, this is um, just some grill mate steak rub that I had sitting in the house, around the house here that we uh, haven't used in a while, but I do like this stuff and I've used it in the past. Um, I use several different types of rubs and seasonings for my, my steak and my venison, um, but this is one of my the ones that I might go to that you can easily get at the store. Grill mates, pretty good stuff, you can try it out. So anyhow guys, I have these all ready to go. As you can see, I'll bring them a little closer. They're already been sitting in here. I like to let that rub kind of settle into the meat before I hit the grill. Now I'm gonna bring you out to the grill and show you what I do out there to start the process. All right guys, so I'm outside here now. Excuse the noise, but somebody, uh, leaf blowing out in the background. It is fall here, so. But I got these two loins here. What I'm gonna do, I'm, I put the grill on high, and I'm gonna let them, I'm just gonna give them a quick singe here on the outside. And then I'm gonna flip them, do the same on the other side, then I'm gonna put them on the top rack here. And then I'm gonna slow cook them on low, low heat for about 20 minutes to a half an hour. I'll just keep my eye on them. So stay tuned, I'll show you what I'm doing there. All right guys, so I got them over the, the hot, hot flames here. I'm just gonna let them, like I said, I'm gonna, basically what I wanna do is just singe the outside of them. And I'll check them here in just a second. But only a few seconds on each side to get them kind of get that brown going. I might even do it again just before they're done. But that's it right there. I just got a little little bit of grill grill marks on them as you can see here on both sides. Then we're gonna put them up top here and slow cook them for 20 minutes or so. So while I'm waiting for this last side to get the little singe on it, I went ahead and grabbed some a plate and some tin foil. And that's the, gonna be the, the key right there. That's the, the clutch aspect of this whole thing so I'll show you what we're gonna do here once these once these are actually physically cooked all right guys like I said don't mind the wind uh, definitely windy today but all right I got these they got enough of a little bit of an outside cook to them I'm just gonna move them right up here to the top grate and over here I'm gonna turn the get over here you can't see it but I'm gonna turn the grill down here right here I turn it down to low and I'm only gonna leave Actually, the, I'm going to leave the outside burners on. These two outside burners down to uh, about medium heat. Just above low there. And as you can see, the flame's not as high as it was. I'm going to shut this and let it go. With those two sitting there for about 20 minutes. And we'll come back to you. We should be ready to go. I like to keep the grill temperature right around the 250 mark. Um, nice slow cook, like I said, 250 is just about right. I don't want to get any more, any more above like 300. All right, guys. Well, that's all going to. I went into my garage fridge here and uh, grabbed myself a beer. Whatever your favorite beer is, it really doesn't matter. Um, but this is also a key component as to how I'm going to keep these nice and moist and uh, nice and tender. So 
I'm gonna crack this open and get it ready in a couple minutes here. Once those steaks are pretty much to my liking. I like them about medium rare. For those of you wondering what temperature you should have them at, I've been doing it for years by eye, but somewhere around the 120 mark should be good. Um, you definitely want them pink still in the middle because venison will dry out really quick and that's obviously what we're trying to avoid here. <laughs> here's the ticket I'm gonna turn the grill on high all the way up and these have been on now for about 15 minutes I just checked one here and it's pretty much just right so just that you want it pretty pink in the center and I'll show you here that's about still a little bit uh, pink there nice and pink still in the middle and what I'm gonna do here take these both right down to directly the hot hot heat again get them set there here is where, get them set there, and here's where the beer comes into play. Get that bad boy opened up, and you're just gonna pour a little bit of that beer right on top. And I'm gonna come over here, where my plate, where my tin foil is, and I'll put a little beer on the bottom of the tin foil. And what this does is it's gonna, once I get these I'm gonna go one time on each side again here, about 30 seconds or so on each one. I'm just about ready to flip them. What this does, I put it in there, it creates, once I close it, it creates a nice atmosphere for them to stay nice and moist in there. I know people love that word, but that is what they do. All right, I just got them flipped over. Just gonna give them a little more sprinkle here. Just a little bit on there, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna shut it real quick, just for one second. Let's see what these guys are looking like here. Okay guys, I'm gonna take these tenderloins, put them right in that beer, and shut them up right away. So now that I got them wrapped, I'm gonna put them back on the grill here on the top grate for five minutes with the grill still on high. And they'll be ready to go to the next step. Okay guys, I've come in the house now. The wind is really getting pretty brutal out there. I'm hoping you guys could hear me through that whole thing. Uh, I've come in and what I'm gonna do now that they took them off the grill after they sat there five minutes. The reason I did that, put them back on in the tin foil for five minutes is the beer that I put on them in inside the tin foil, I wanna give that a chance to heat up as well. Once I do that, I put it all in there and make it like a little cocoon and that's gonna keep it nice and uh, the moisture will stay into the meat and in about 20 minutes is when I'll open it up. So it's actually still cooking in there slightly. So I'm gonna let it do its thing and 20 minutes and you'll start, you'll, we'll open them up. You'll see how nice and juicy these things are gonna be. In the meantime, there's no sense in not enjoying the uh, Oktoberfest I opened up here. So cheers guys. Okay guys, so it's been uh, just about 15 minutes here and I haven't opened it up. I've left it in its little cocoon here for 15 minutes now so it's still cooking and like I said the beer was in there and it's keeping the meat like really tender and, and moist inside there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack her open and show you guys uh, what it looks like. So I know you guys have been kind of waiting here so I'm going to transfer this over here to, oops, it's still hot. Transfer it over and we're going to open her up here and see what she looks like. Oh yeah, that steam still coming up out of there. It's just what you want. And look at that, hope you guys can see that. Look at all that moisture still in there. Still some from the beer, but you can see the juices coming out of that tenderloin. Hey, I'm gonna show you guys a close up. Look at how juicy that is, guys. All those juices coming out of there. I'm transfer it over and cut up a piece here. Take this one out here. Oh man, look at the juice inside there, guys. If you wanna keep your venison, you can go do this with your back shop too, but if you wanna keep this, your venison tender, man, let me tell you, get this cut up here. And you can see it definitely, it definitely cooked it more, but look at that. 
it's still pink in there, but we get to the middle, it should be just right here. Look at that, guys. Nice pink center. Tell you what, that is a nice piece of venison right there. Here we go, guys. We're going to give the old taste test a real. Oh, my God. If you don't want dry venison, guys, let me tell you, this is the way to go. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, just quick recap here. All you need is beer, um, your favorite seasoning. Let it marinate for. Usually, I let I let it marinate for twenty four hours. If I'm in a rush, it doesn't. You know, and I can't. I don't have that much time. These cuts of meat are so good and tender that you know half an hour or an hour in the fridge with the marinade on them is fine. Then you throw it on that grill, man, and do it just how I showed you, and it should come out just like that, nice and tender, and cook perf perfectly to perfection each time. So. On the grill time you want to go, depends on your grill. Um, like I said, you're going to singe the, you know, both sides real quick for about 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how high you have your grill set. Put it on that top rack for 20 minutes at least at like 250 on the temperature. And when you get it out, take it out, wrap it up, put a little beer on it, singe it a couple more times, put the beer on it, wrap it up in that tin foil, back on the top rack for 15 minutes. I'm sorry, for five minutes. Take it off. Then for 15 minutes, you're going to let it set on your cutting board or wherever you got it in the house. Don't touch it. Leave it wrapped up tight for 15 minutes and you guys should be good to go. You can do this with regular steak at the store too. It works just, just as well. But venison is very, very lean. So one of my favorite ways to do it. My other favorite way is in the cast iron. And I think I've showed you guys that in the past. But if not, I might be doing a, a cast iron deer meat uh, video in the future too. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope this helps you. I know a lot of people overcook their venison so easily on the grill. They throw it on there for too long, not understanding that it's just such a tender meat that you really have to be cautious of how long you cook it. But this stuff, I tell you what, you can't beat it. All right, guys. Cheers to all of you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please think about doing so. It helps me greatly. I'm climbing up and it feels great knowing you guys are keep hitting that button. It really, it really does make me feel good. It makes me want to continue to make these videos for you guys. If you have any ideas or future ideas of videos or something you'd like to see, let me know. I did have an, uh, a person ask me a, a few videos back about doing a, a possible uh, ride along hunt slash uh, take somebody fishing, a subscriber fishing. Obviously with things the way they are right now, that would be kind of tough to do this, this year. Um, but I am very interested in doing something like that. If you guys are interested in ever coming out, learning one of my techniques, how I'm fishing, whether it be trout fishing, saltwater fishing, kayak fishing, hunting, different things, let me know. I get a lot of people on my Facebook channel asking me questions all the time. Some younger younger guys out there too that have, are just starting out that have kind of come to me and asked me about how I do certain things. So I really appreciate that. And I love giving the intel and trying to help people out because that's what it's all about, keeping the sport going. So if you enjoyed this, again, please hit that subscribe button, notification bell so you can catch my future episodes. And for now, cheers, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.